Hi, my name is Zhu Hua from University of Birmingham. I'm delighted to meet you here. In this talk, I'll use the opportunity to reflect on the paradigm shift and tension in the intercultural communication research in the area I'm familiar with. The topic for my talk is cultural polarization at the time of a crisis. As an applied linguist interested in multilingual intercultural communication, I have been working on the interplay between language, culture, and society. In my earlier works, I have used an amic approach to understanding social cultural interaction routines. And in the last few years, I have focused on examining how being intercultural is a socially constructed phenomenon. And I have investigated conversation inequality and other in practice in interactions. While working with the notion of interculturality, I have noticed there is a rise in the use of terms such as interculturality and transculturality in the last two decades. Interculturality may be defined differently. Some use it to refer to interactions and active engagement between different cultural groups and communities versus coexistence of cultural groups and communities. In my work and others, interculturality in, in interaction research draws from the constructivist paradigm and argues that intercultural differences and cultural memberships are socially constructed. The focus is on the process of interaction and what the participants achieve out of the experience in terms of new values, identity, and practices. For me, the appeals of the term lies in the more postmodern, performative, and interdiscursive approaches to the concept of culture. And this more fluid understanding culture has also gained popular acceptance in, for example, discussions of interculturality and more recently, transculturality, which further emphasizes the intermingle of distinct cultures and the blurry lines between them in the global situation. In the meanwhile, there is a tension between theoretical endeavors that promotize a static notion of culture and the established everyday practices that essentialize and reify cultural memberships, particularly around nationalities and ethnicities. Some quick examples of how we live culture in practices. There are situations in which reified notions of, of national culture become salient as people make conscious effort to draw boundaries between us and them, to reinforce so-called cultural norms, and to strategically essentialize themselves and others. In the advert, we see commodification of Frenchness and Italianness we also see a strategic essentialism strategy in Minari star Yun Yu Zhong's BAFT speech. Using her own words, she said, Every award is meaningful, but this one is especially being recognized by British people, known as very snobbish people, and their approval of me as a good actor. So I'm very privileged and happy. The reification and polarization between cultures and within communities have significantly increased during COVID-19. Health behavior has become one of the new markers of in-group and out-group membership. In a recently completed project funded by British Academy in collaboration with Rodney Jones and Silver Yavaski, we explore how COVID-19 and response to it have polarized both differences between cultures and within communities and come to function as markers in and out group and the consequences of this for researching and understanding in the cultural communication in a time of a crisis. Our methodology follows a community-based participatory framework. We've recruited five participant researchers and 80 regular participants from the community of Chinese students in UK. Other data sources include interviews, diaries, video data, media texts. Many examples of othering discrimination in our data were associated with wearing of face masks, where a health practice which participants associated with acting responsibly was transformed into an album of danger. Can you be quick? An Asian is here. I don't want to get infected. Not all this face mask related other in however was violent. Sometimes it took the form of moral superiority grounded in supposed adherence to scientific evidence. 
Here, for example, is a story of students whose professor asked her to take her mask off in class, explaining to her that her behavior was not research-based. The student in this case is put on the spot in order to be considered a legitimate participant in the classroom. She had to take an action contrary to her health beliefs, which were themselves delegitimized by her teacher. One strategy for dealing with stigmatization of face masks was to reappropriate the symbol as an emblem of more universal human identity, as the Southampton University Chinese Students Association did with its anti-discrimination poster. Now, of course, wearing masks is more common in the UK and even mandated in public transport, though masks are often euphemized as face covering. In any case, the status of mask as a member of ethnic otherness has changed. Mask wearing is no longer considered a cultural practice, but a matter of science, and in some cases, a matter of law. But of course, it's not only Chinese students whose health practice are turned into an emblem of outgroup membership. In this excerpt, a participant talks about how, in a WeChat group for Chinese students in their dormitory, the apparent inability behavior of foreign students, which ironically here means British students, to abide by the rules regarding social gathering gave rise to a flurry of outrage, with some suggesting that Chinese students be given their own building or at least their own floor. An important point to note about exercise of constructing others as outgroup is that they often function to create a sense of solidarity among members of the perceived in-groups. That's the consensus at the end of this expert, excerpt that it's good to discover more Chinese people. On a more practical level, this kind of sorting people into in-groups and out-groups by rehearsing supposed links between health, risk, and ethnicity is not so simple. Since students need to negotiate lots of different in-groups and out-groups in a delicate balancing act in which they attempt to assess the health practices of different kinds of in-groups and out-groups, friends, flatmates, classmates, those foreigners on the, so on the sixth floor weighing the risk and benefits of different ways of drawing boundaries between people. The negotiation of in-group and out-group membership, especially as it intersects with notions of nationalistic loyalty, is not something the students escape when they return to China, where they are relegated to a different out-groups. In this blog post, the student talks about the painful irony facing returning Chinese students who suddenly found themselves labeled as westernized in the UK, where people bring in Chinese virus to London, who should just go home, and going home, where people bring in Chinese virus to China, who should just go back abroad. So what do these findings mean for ICC? The crisis has reified and polarized intercultural difference significantly, and questioned the fluid approach to interculturality. We have seen health behaviors become a significant marker of cultural groups as well as a marker of in-groups and out-groups. We see othering taking place within one national group. These nuanced understanding of how we interact with, during health crisis can contribute to our understanding of how cultural belonging is formed, denied, or reinforced, and ultimately, where is the room or block for interculturality. Finally, in terms of implication for researching the culturality, I argue that now more than ever, understanding how cultural differences or are polarized and talk into being should be priority for scholars in the cultural communication. If we are to respond to the rise of tribalism and nativism in everyday life, we need to inter interrogate what culture does and how culture accentuates differences and boundaries between different groups and reconnects with the original goals and concerns in the field of intercultural communication. I'll finish with uh, the quote uh, from Thornton 1988 on the slide. Thank you for listening.